find out how schools are successfully tackling in-school variation, we've come to Lawrence Sheriff School. There are three key elements to its ISV project. Student feedback in each subject, interdepartmental collaboration, and regular interrogation of the data. Lawrence Sheriff, a grammar school in rugby, first began to tackle ISV in 2003. In 2008, the school achieved top place in the National State School GCSE table. I think it's in many ways uh, at the core of the school's success over recent years. Um, and it's interesting, Ofsted have agreed with me on that. Um, so um, the project has now taken us through two inspections and in both in inspections, um, Ofsted came back and said, well, look, actually, we think this is playing a fundamental part because the big focus has been upon staff learning from one another and upon staff learning from students. Looking back on the project as a whole, what do you think's been the toughest bit of it? I think it is this whole, um, really the, the initial um, idea of saying, I do believe that um, we can do something to reduce the variation in results. That was probably what produced the most resistance. So that people were saying, no, there's always been these differences in results between departments. It's part of a natural order of things. And actually, when you dig into it, it's not that it's part of a natural order of things. It's just that it's been going on for a long time. A key part of tackling ISV at Lawrence Sheriff has been student voice. Regular meetings, known as work trawls, take place in which students from all the year groups give feedback on each subject. Today, it's the turn of biology. OK, guys, so as those of you who've done um, these work trolls before will know, what we want you to do is we'd like you to change books, um, not with someone in the same year group, and ideally not with someone in the same key stage as you. So what we will do uh, is we'll talk about it together. I'll try and capture some of your comments so that I can then feed them back to the subject leader. Sorry, it's like that. Biology has been revising its curriculum so that there's more continuity between what boys learn in year seven and what boys in the sixth form learn. We've actually done quite a lot of what, what we do at AS level. I mean, I looked through this, because this is really quite surprising, actually. Like this, for example, here. Um, I've seen words, palisade cell, ciliated epithelial cell, xylem vessels, that I didn't even know existed until I first came to AS level. That's interesting. And, and are you finding you can follow that work? You know, I find it too difficult. It's quite basic form, so it's quite easy to understand. I find this is just sort of a watered-down version. It's the basics of what I'm learning, and I think that makes it quite nice, because it means you can start with the basics, augment on that, implement it, build on it. Mm. Go, and as you go further at the key stages, go further through the levels, you know, it gets... Um, I think that... I kind of wish I could go back to year seven. <laughs> I'll quote you on that, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. I mean, the department will be very encouraged to hear that, because they've worked hard on linking up the two. So that's a sign of what, that what they've been doing is having an impact in his work. It's great you feel you can understand it, too. Student voice is very strong here. Um, as you can see in the virtuals, these are done in every subject area, every year. Uh, and we are told as heads of department what the students think of their, their learning um, within, our within our subject area. We have evaluation forms for the end of year, for the end of A-level, for the end of GCSE. And I would certainly act on any comments that were recurring and that I thought needed to be addressed. Last year's work trawl for biology found students complaining of too many worksheets. So the department made changes and is keen to know whether the changes have been successful. We thought it would be good to just collect some of your feelings on um, what you've seen. Now, the first one I've got here is a comment on the range of assessment tasks. Now, the sort of things you were mentioning to me as, um, as we were going around and comparing notes with one another, write-up of experiments, um, notes, essays, some worksheets and also end of unit tests. Does that sound about the right sort of balance of things? What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's a sort of a, a reasonably varied diet that you're getting? Yeah. Yeah. 
Big food groups can be metabolised to release energy. We've got three so far. Uh, Viresh, another one, please. Lipids, good... The student feedback seems to confirm that the biology department has successfully reduced the number of lessons based on worksheets. Um, do you have a different one, Leo? Yeah, When the school first tackled ISV, biology was one of the subjects which was underperforming. This is no longer the case. I think it needed strong leadership. I think we needed to, to pull the department together a little bit. Um, any internal variation, we needed to sort that out so that students got the same learning experience regardless of which teacher was teaching them. And we've worked hard on that to share best practice. So that involves some difficult conversations with teachers in the department? Well, yes, uh, we're all professionals, we all work together very well, but yes, it does involve um, saying to someone, if necessary, that, that you need to improve in this area and this is what you need to address. One issue which the department is looking at is consistency in marking, so it's keen for feedback on this from the students. I mean, let's just compare notes in terms of um, the regularity and the detail of marking within the department. The marking is fairly regular. I mean, it's every other page, really, there's something marked. Yeah. But as far as detail goes, there, it's quite small amounts. It's ticks or it'll have a yes. short comment, nothing more than two or three lines. Yeah, thanks, sir. Is that other people's experience? Go on, to you. Normally, we have, like, a two or three line comment. So it's yes. And should explain if you've done anything bad or how to improve it. Mm. And that'll give you the pinpoint of what you've done wrong. I think there is a bit of inconsistency in the sense that <coughs> some, some teachers seem to be writing comments, some don't. Mm. We, um, we get the oral feedback from the teacher. Yeah. So they speak to us and give the uh, stuff that they haven't been able to write down. So the importance of oral feedback, I think, is really worth emphasising. But how is the department going to address the inconsistency in marking? We will be having um, departmental meetings where we will uh, raise that issue and we will, um, I think that we'll spend some time doing some marking together. So we'll be looking at each other's marking, seeing, sharing best practice and perhaps pointing out where comments could be added or perhaps something more constructive could be put into the marking so that the student feels that they're getting constructive feedback throughout. But do the students feel they're free in the work trawl to say what they really think. Oh, yeah. We, um, we, school has a very good student voice and every, everything goes listened to. A student wouldn't exactly tell their teacher that, oh, this is wrong, I don't think you should be doing it this way or doing it that way, whereas in this sort of environment it's quite easy to do so. Because it's um, sort of not personal because it, and because it's not to the teacher's face, I think it, they'll take it um, a lot more lightly if there is any negative things. I think, and also because there's a group of us, it's not just one. When ISV was first tackled, the main change which took place was to create partnerships between departments across the whole school. Our particular strategy was to try pairing groups of departments, putting English and science together, French and German, history and geography, and really just saying, look, there's no weak, there's no strong partner, everyone has got something to learn from the other. The partnerships involve departments jointly reviewing data, sharing best practice and peer observation. Biology has found that its partnership with English has worked surprisingly well. You get new input onto, onto um, areas that you hadn't thought about from a different angle. But with English, the literacy skills are very important in biology, more so than the other two sciences. What does it not contain? Doesn't contain any animal facts. Written coherent answers are very important in exams. So certainly working with English, we were able to develop those writing skills with the students. The differentials have reduced quite markedly. Um, so the targeted departments um, our sort of back of an envelope idea when we first began was we'll reduce the variation to no more than 10%. And in every one of those departments I've mentioned, those pairings, that was what we did. Um, and in actual fact, in some cases, it then moved the other way. The department who was making up ground actually moved ahead of the department it was making ground on. After a while, the school was concerned that the partnerships were running out of steam. So they've come up with a new idea, to link groups of three departments together in what they call triads. 
The aim is to enable teachers across departments to observe each other and share tips. You know, we do have a, a, a number who seem to not attain, attain what they should do, including the uh, higher the ones who should be higher achievers and get the A stars, and they're not always getting the A stars. Maybe, you know, a, a student is a BA borderline student, but there may be just one aspect in, of, of, of their sort of repertoire that is preventing them achieving that A star. So rigorous, frequent um, diagnostic assessment yeah. mm. needs, to be, needs to be introduced, but also it's, it's, it's that tracking. Within science, where I teach things. physics, we've already had set up now for several years a spreadsheet across from year nine up to year 11. And I know our courses are modular, whereas yours are kind of more towards the end, but mm. their scores get recorded every module for coursework internally, as well as the um, external exams that they sit twice the year. And that quickly shows us whether somebody is on target because the, the spreadsheet is color coded so that those below immediately yeah. flag up as red. Yeah. And as a class yeah. practitioner, yeah. you then bring it up on the board well. yeah. for the boys to yeah. see. And it, yes, it's a bit of shame factor in a way, but similarly, they want to then achieve as the others and be either just the black color where they're bang on target or get the greens where they're above where they should be. Because then they've got something to achieve to that they can see, that they can understand straight away. And then we can go down to Collaboration between departments um, is something the teachers welcome. I, uh, I think it's possibly true to say that we don't do enough of interdepartmental consultation. You know, you tend to sit in your little empire and do your thing. It's looking at the individual student and how different teachers in different departments will, um, succeed with the needs of, uh, of different students. I also think it's valuable that we do observe each other because when you become the head of department, suddenly you think, oh, hang on, I've done everything, and you might sit back. But it actually shows you that, no, what you're doing might not be correct all of the time and that you can always still learn from each other. Weaker, so you've been concentrating too much on them and not... The school believes the data needs to be constantly interrogated for variation in performance. As the senior leadership team meets to examine the latest figures, they've discovered that some departments are more successful with the lower ability students, whilst others are more successful with the higher ability ones. I think what this shows is that there is an interesting variation across the school. Now, we've had some initial chats with them. So, for example, we've said to history um, that there are things to think about because um, with the students that they've got who are on the just about level five, um, but not as many of them as we might wish are converting that to an A or an A star grade. Um, whereas a subject like English do a very good job with the students who come in at level four um, and, and um, are very strong on that, but maybe there's work to do at level fives. Sometimes when you dig beneath the headlines, you find that the real detail tells you slightly different stories. So departments with strong headline performance Actually, we still found that there were, there were areas where their performance could improve for certain groups of students they didn't connect with as strongly as we might have expected. Similarly, other departments where we thought, well, overall, yeah, you know, your performance might be able to improve, but we then found they were succeeding very strongly with particular ability ranges, particular groups of students. So, yes, it's made us see the performance of departments in a, in, in a slightly different light, I think.